Hey everybody, welcome to the Bandit Show. Uh, had a bye week last week. Let's call it a bye week. Um, just I tried to get in a short rant out, but in some technical issues messed it up. But I'm back, uh, ready to just discuss what's going on around the NFL. Uh, the almost midway point of the season, um, and I thought there's no better way to start than to review where we're at. And let's say, let's start with um, a new bit that I'm going to put in. I'm going to start ranking my. Uh, I'm going to start ranking my ten best teams in the NFL. These are my personal opinion. People are going to disagree, but this is my top ten best teams in the NFL right now at the week eight point. So just. Um, I'm going to start number 10. Number 10, I've got the Chicago Bears. Now, you might think the Bears are trash, the Bears are going to win a Super Bowl. No, I don't think they're going to win a Super Bowl. I don't think they're in contention for a Super Bowl. But right now, the Bears are winning games. They may not be pretty, but the Bears are winning games, and they'll take that. Nick Foles isn't the future in Chicago. That's very obvious. But the second in their division, winning games, they also destroyed the box a few weeks ago. There's one thing I can't argue with a team that's winning games. I can't not put them in, a top, in the 10. So uh, number 10, the Chicago Bears. Number nine, I've got the Los Angeles Rams, uh, who just last night uh, humiliated the Bears on uh, national television. Um the Rams, no, this is a very tough division. I think the Rams will miss out on the playoffs because of it. But obviously, there's an extra, there is an extra spot. So, uh, who knows this year? Um, the Rams, the Rams need to build on some stuff. But the defense is playing better. Aaron Donald's still a complete monster. Jalen Ramsey's looks like he's playing better this year. Um, as soon as they get. Everyone healthy. I know they had injuries uh, to the running game earlier this year. I think as soon as everyone's healthy, it's um, they're going to start sort of creeping up that list. And I think they'll make the playoff spot and uh, they'll give a team in the playoffs a, a good point. But get to that, get to that when it happens. Um, at number eight, I have Arizona. Now Arizona, uh, fantastically fun to watch. You know, Kyler Murray's running about and darting up and down the field, scoring touchdowns, throwing touchdown passes. Um, they are missing Chandler Jones massively. Their defense looks almost non-existent without him. Somehow, um, yeah, they beat they beat Seattle, but I think three picks helped them. Um, Kyler Murray. It was all offense. Their defense did not look good at any point in that game. They need a pass rush, uh, which moves me on to. Number seven, which is Seattle. Now, I could probably switch Seattle and Arizona because I think they're basically the same team at this point. Now, Russell Wilson's still, I think, having an MVP year. I think he's still brilliant. But Seattle Seattle are going to be one and done in the playoffs. Unless they play the... Unless they end up playing a team from... Unless they end up playing a team from the NFC East, I think they're one and done from the playoffs. They've got no pass rush. They've got no defense. They can't stop anything. They have to win in shootouts. Now, Russell Wilson can win a shootout. I have no doubt about that. And maybe this is the year where defense might not matter in the playoffs that much. But defense is now the big concern. How many games will they lose because of the defense? Russell Wilson's winning games and the defense is losing them. This is a massive problem for Seattle. Number six, now this might come as a bit of a shock, but I've got the Steelers at six. I know the Steelers are the only undefeated team left in the NFL. I'm not sold. I'm not sold on the Steelers. I think um, Big Ben almost lost the game against the Titans, even though they were leading by 20-something points. It, was, it wasn't convincing uh, at all. Um, Chase Claypool had a really down week this year, this week. Um, nothing, nothing seemed to work that well. Uh, I'm not sold on them. Maybe they need to. Uh, maybe I'll judge again. After the next couple of games, I can't see them dropping it to the top 10. They are undefeated, and I can't ignore that. That's why I've got them in here. And now we go top five, top one. Number five, I've got the Ravens. Um, again, a team I'm not sold on. I'm winning a Super Bowl. Uh, the Ravens have seemed to struggle against bigger teams, better teams. They're, 
I can't overlook the game against Kansas City where Kansas shut them down and it's almost, it's probably inevitable. Someone's going to have to beat Kansas to get to a Super Bowl in the AFC or you're going to have to go through Kansas at some point and I don't think the Ravens can do it. No, they have just added um, Unique Ngokwe to the pass rush, which is much needed. They probably could do with a second wide receiver. Um, and that's more than likely why Des Bryant is going into the practice squad and maybe we'll see him at some point this season. At uh, number four, I have the Green Bay Packers. Um, the only reason I've got the Green Bay Packers so low, even though I think Aaron Rodgers himself is having an MVP year, is because the game, the game a few weeks ago against the Bucs, um, it's done what it did for me last year when they lost to Seattle. I'm not sold on this team. If, if if a team in the playoffs goes up by 10 points, I don't think they win. There's, I, I don't have faith in this team to come back from a deficit. I have faith in them to go and put up a lot of points against someone, and they can put up a lot of points against a good team. If they're winning by 10, then yeah. If they're losing by 10, then I, I don't see them coming back at any point. Um, Number three, the Titans. Um, not much more to say other than Derek Henry is an absolute monster and will continue to turn through defences until the day he dies. Um, the defence is miles better than last year. Ryan Tannehill plays well. Um, they probably should have won the game against the Steelers. No, I will say that they seem to have a problem with first half play at the minute. Knowing if they go up against a team, let's say they make it to a Super Bowl and they go up against a team like Green Bay, um, Green Bay is going to put past. If, if they struggle on defense in the first half, Green Bay is going to put up a lot of points in that first half. Now, um, we get to the top two. Number two, I've got the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, just adding Le'Veon Bell to the roster, giving them a new threat. Um, I think they just they look they look unstoppable. Um, Defense is playing better. That game against the Bills was massive towards the season. It shows that they don't have to uh, throw over people. They can just run right through you. Um, the Bills were trying to prevent the big play. And the Chiefs kept taking the short run play and just overall destroyed them during that game. And then at number one, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who on this show have been sort of, were sort of ridiculed by people during the off season, um, saying that they probably wouldn't be that good. Uh, no, they could still make a massive turnaround and lose a bunch of games. But since they lost to the Bears, after the, they've not looked. They've not looked like the same team. They're, um, finally, everything seems to be clicking. Uh, Tom Brady is. Tom Brady has played at MVP form for two games. I won't put him in the top in the contention for it yet. Uh, if he keeps it up, probably. But um, the Bucks are probably the best round, the best all round team in the NFL at the minute, and I think they've got the best shot at a Super Bowl. Um, which sort of brings me to my next point, which was sort of teams which can and can win a Super Bowl. And I've got four teams that can win a Super Bowl. I've got three teams that can win a Super Bowl. I've got one that's sort of a closer than everyone else. Um, I've got the Bucs. Um, I've just said the best, uh, best all-round team. Uh, the Chiefs, same reasons as I've just said in the top ten. You know, they've got, got Le'Veon Bell there now. Uh, the running game is working. Defense is working. They should, I, I mean... I think they're going to look unstoppable soon enough. And can you blame them? This is, this is, um, they've got a, whilst they're still paying Patrick Mahomes small money this year, his contract only starts next year. Um, this is probably the time to try and win a few Super Bowls. No, um, the other one is the, is the Titans. It's, it's, it's my top three from the, from the top ten. I think they're the teams that can win Super Bowls guaranteed um, if they make it. Um, I'd love to see the Titans and Chiefs match up again. I think that would be a crazy fun game. Um, the Titans, yeah, it's just Derek Henry. I think this team is built around Derek Henry. Mike Vrabel is getting people 
energized and they're all buying into the new system in Tennessee. And I think Tennessee, Tennessee are going to win that division outright. And I think Tennessee are going to look. Tennessee could be on the way to another AFC Championship matchup. Uh, now, you may be expecting, maybe expecting that fourth team uh, to be the Ravens, but no, it is the Green Bay Packers. I've got the Green Bay Packers just outside of the bubble for winning the Super Bowl. Um, like I said, they just seem, when they're down, they just seem really like a bad team. They look like the Browns. They look like the Browns, which is good, they're fun, they're exciting to watch, they can play offense. But when they're down by 10, 15 points, you're not going to put money on them to win the game from there. Now, um, this is, you know, there's obviously some teams that people are probably asking, oh, why, why are you not putting them in there? Now, um, Seattle, Seattle needs a pass rush. Seattle needs a defense. Uh, Seattle are giving up the same amount of yards, roughly the same amount of yards per play on defense as the Jets are giving up on the same end of the ball. That's the Jets. The Jets that are currently 0-7 at the bottom of the league. This is... That's that's dreadful to hear. Um, now, I've got Pittsburgh in that. This, my only thing is I'm still not sold on them. The same way a lot of people weren't sold on the 49ers last year very early on, I'm not sold on Pittsburgh. Might be 6-0, and but... I don't see it. Um, the Patriots is one that people talked about quite a few weeks ago as a team that were going to have a good playoff run and win the division. Now, don't look like it anymore. But Cam Newton has gone back to um, Carolina form. Um, he doesn't look that great. Now, whether the COVID infection has messed with him and he's not, um, and he sort of feels a bit off still, we don't yet know that. Um, but obviously, nobody's had a good game for the Patriots since the Seattle game. Probably the Seattle game was the 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 game that the Patriots looked good. The, the the game that sold a lot of people on the Patriots this year was that Seattle game, even though they lost. Um, I don't know. I'm, I've I've sold my stock. I'm I'm done. I don't, I don't think the Patriots are anywhere near. Um, now, whether they make the playoffs is a different story. This is obviously that extra spot could mean that so many different teams make the playoffs this year. But I, I don't see it, really. No. One of the big things um, going around is um, the Cowboys. Everyone's, everyone watches the Cowboys, right? We're all, we're all watching the Cowboys to laugh at the Cowboys. Most of us are watching the Cowboys for that. But... At the end of the day, there's a lot of questions going around. Should the Cowboys rebuild? Which is one I would say yes. The Cowboys need a definite rebuild and need to admit that they're doing a rebuild. Mike McCarthy is not the right coach to lead a rebuild. This needs to happen now. The next thing is that should they tank tank in a sense now I know that no team really tanks everyone wants to win but should they tank and try and get a good quarterback or get something good really good out of the draft get a top 10 pick now I think the Cowboys are going to get a top 15 pick no matter what really um, the Cowboys can't tank though the Cowboys can't tank for the fact of they might have I mean, the record is somewhat silly, like two and five or whatever. But the the technically they're still in a good place in their division, which sounds stupidly weird to say when you're saying that a team is two and five and still has a chance of winning a division and going and making the playoffs. But in the event of the NFC East, that's a massively real possibility because the division needs scrapping. But he could, they could actually go to the playoffs. Now they'll get blown out in the playoffs, and I think it'll be like really hard to watch. But the, um, this is it. The Cowboys are done for. I mean, Andy Dalton went down on a horrible hit. Um, they've got a third-string quarterback in, a rookie. Um, 
this year's going to be hard. The, this is going to be a hard season to watch. And I think the Eagles are slightly better, even though their injuries are massive as well. Um, but the NFC East is wide open for a bad team to just walk right through to get a playoff spot and keep kidding themselves that they're actually an okay team. Which I think is an interesting concept in the fact that if a division's so bad, you don't have to be good to make a playoff game. I think the only reason I think the Cowboys should rebuild and they should scrap this season is because, yeah, you can make the playoffs or you can keep making the playoffs with a bad team. But don't you want to start making the playoffs every year and going on deep playoff runs with a good team? If you look at what the Patriots were like in the NF- in the AFC East for a long time, the AFC has been like really bad for quite a few years. They were just winning the division outright every year, and that's sort of, that's the security you want. The more you can game plan for playoff games, the better you play in those playoff games, and the more chance you'll have at winning a Super Bowl. I think this is why. Belichick was always so good because, yeah, they were playing for a first seat. They were still playing in those games, but he was always, as soon as they'd made the playoffs, he was, he has one eye on the playoffs. He can game plan far enough ahead in which a team could walk into Foxborough and they'd lost from the moment the bot was kicked. They lost from the moment they got off the bus to get in the, to go to the stadium. This, that was like, that was it. I remember saying to her, I remember saying to some people like, there's only one team that wins in Foxborough on playoff Sunday. And it's and you know who it is. Um now um quite a few weeks ago I made um I made a video that said how the MVP playoff race, uh, the MVP race in the NFL had started from I think it was week three. I think it was week three by the time I mentioned it. Now the MVP race has now been, oh, I'm going to say whittled down to two people. Whittled down to two people uh, in the sense of Josh Allen. Josh Allen's out. I think if, if it have only had one bad game, that's fine. But he's had two really bad games in a row. Um, two or three, is it now? I don't know. Um, Chiefs, Titans, Chiefs, Titans, and yeah, the game against the Jets as well, which is weird to say. I guess someone had a bad game against the Jets. To be fair, I think the Dolphins had a bad game against the Jets when they beat them, but that's that's for later. I'm saving that. Um, Josh Allen's out of the MVP race. Let's be honest with everyone. Um, you can't have two game, two or three games like that, and expect to still be in the MVP race. No, they're still in the playoff race. The AFC East is, at the minute, I don't think there's a great team in there. I don't think there's that much of a good team in there. A few mediocre teams, and I think they'll serve up some good games as we move down the stretch. Now, the MVP race now whittles itself down, so I think uh, Rodgers, Wilson, maybe Brady moves his way into that race soon enough, and I think you've got to consider... You, I mean, it's hard to consider any other position than quarterback, I'd probably say. I'd like to consider people like Derek Henry and uh, good running backs, but you just sort of know that they're not really going to gonna get there, which is sort of a shame. Um, I think I think Russell Wilson's winning it. Um, I can't get over that Rodgers game against Brady. Um, he threw two interceptions and he didn't want to play anymore. And this is, this is where... When I did, I did top five people who annoy me quite a few weeks ago, and this was one of my things. Is he's got to look like he wants to play. Like you've thrown two interceptions, one of them wasn't even his fault, and then he shot off completely, and he went back to Rogers under McCarthy. It's, that's what's going to kill a Packers team if Aaron Rodgers shuts down. That's what kills a Packers team. Now, um. I've got, um, obviously, big news recently is um, Antonio Brown coming back to the NFL. Antonio Brown will be joining Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As we all know, Antonio Brown is, I think, clinically insane, but he's also one of the best wide receivers that can play at the minute. 
Um, if he can return to his old form, then he's a massive weapon. He's a massive weapon that I think can be used in great ways for... That can be used in great ways for the Buccaneers and the Bruce Arians' offence. The question is, um, how quickly will he get an understanding of that playbook? How quickly will he fit into the offence where they already have good wide receivers? I think if anyone needed Antonio Brown, it was probably the Ravens. Mm -hmm. It was teams that teams that needed a wide receiver. The Ravens needed a wide receiver. Um, Green Bay could have used a wide receiver, to be honest. I don't know if right. uh, Antonio Brown had gone playing the cold weather. But this is where... This is obviously trade deadlines coming up this uh, soon enough. Um, this is the right time to start looking for your future star wide receiver, maybe even if it's only a one-year contract. Now, um, before I move on to my uh, my uh, my big topic, my main topic for the week, let's go. Um, I've got offensive player of the week for this week. Um, this is based on week seven. I would I didn't do for week six. Obviously, having the week off last week. Um, Offensive player of the week, I have got Devontae Adams for the Green Bay Packers. And if anyone watched anything from the Green Bay Packers game, we'll know exactly why that is. Devontae Adams is one of the best wide receivers in the league. If only people would stop saying that Rodgers needs more. Um, and defensive player of the week is obviously, it's got to be DK Metcalf. I mean, look at that, that chase down, 22 point something miles per hour. You cannot beat that. Obviously, I'm I'm kidding. It's um, Cole Holcomb for the Washington football team. Probably a player, probably a team that I didn't expect to give any of my weekly awards to uh, at any point during the season. But um, I think it was he had an interception, he had a sack, he had a tackle for loss. He where he absolutely um, that was on his sack. He absolutely ran over Ezekiel Elliott. No, the Cowboys aren't a good team, but this is this is amazing. I mean, you can't really argue with the stats. No, lucky bastard of the week. Uh, the fantasy award that goes to a person playing fantasy this week in the Bandits Fantasy League. If you do want to keep up with the Bandits Fantasy League, make sure you go and check out our Facebook link is in the description. Um, no, lucky bastard of the week is going to go to me this week because I had a wide receiver that got zero point something points. I was losing by 60 points on, or just under 60 points heading into the Arizona and Seattle game. And I had Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett. And I think everyone can imagine how that went. I won the game by 12 points in the end. So that goes to me this week. Um, God, that's a fun award to give out. Lucky bastard of the week. I even got called lucky by the person I beat. Suck it, Chris. No, this is my main topic. My main topic of the week is Tua is in, Ryan Fitzmagic is out. No, I'm going to break this sort of down and I'm going to look at the, the first part of it is where do the Dolphins sit right now? The Dolphins sit at three and three. They sit second in their division, just above the Patriots, just below the Bills, the Bills. Uh, the Dolphins should be also filled with confidence in the fact that the Bills lost only one by eight points against the Jets and didn't score a single touchdown in that game. Now, they've played all of the games with fit. Let's look at what they've done. The three teams they beat, they beat the Jets and the Jags, two bad teams. They also beat the 49ers. Now, the 49ers were banged up, yes. But Jimmy Garoppolo was playing, George Kittle was playing. That was, that was the, the, like, they were back. Sort of the same team that's just battered the Patriots at the weekend was beaten by the Miami Dolphins. That's what I'm going to take from that. Um, shows that the Dolphins were improving. It also shows that the 49ers were extremely hurt at that point, giving Jimmy Garoppolo a 15 passer rating during the first half. He was benched at half time. Now let's look at the, the Dolphins' losses. Patriots, first week. Uh, I don't know how many people saw it, but it was highly competitive. Uh, as a lot of the Patriots and Dolphins games have been past few times other than the one down in Miami last year at the start of the season when the Dolphins were horrible. No, lost to the Bills when the Bills were on their big run. That was a shootout. Um, 
That was a winnable game for the Dolphins, another highly competitive game. Lost to the Seahawks. Again, competitive game. It was really close. I think lost by a point in the end it was. So the sense that I'm getting from this is that, the yeah, the winning game, the beating the teams they should beat, other than the 49ers, they've got an extra win on top. The losing to the teams that they should lose and the losing to them in close games, which is really good considering this team came from being blown out 50-something points to nothing or 50-something points to seven or whatever it was against the Ravens. Uh, last year in week one. So this has all been with Ryan Fitzpatrick. And now I'd like to point out, let's give him, let's give Ryan Fitzpatrick grades. Let's give him a grade for his first six weeks. Let's give him a grade for each one. Uh, week one, F. The Dolphins were competitive, but it was the defense that kept him in. I remember Jerome Baker having a stupidly ridiculous set line of 16 tackles some for a loss and a forced fumble or something like that. Uh, in that game, Ryan Fitzpatrick threw for zero passing touchdowns and two interceptions. Yeah, that's not good for any quarterback. Let's go to game two. This is this is the game against the Bills. Now, I've given him a C. I've tried to make it a C plus or up into a B. Um, I've done this because it was a loss. It was the Bills. It was a shooter. He couldn't really keep up that well. Um, but he did keep it close enough to make it a fun game to sort of watch in those last few minutes. Uh, and then we'll go to game three, which was the game against the Jags on Thursday night football. And an A. You have to give him, you have to give him an A. Um, you know, it was amazing. I think he... The first half, he, he only had one incompletion in the first half. Um, I think it was three touchdowns or something like that. He ran for some. He looked like he was having an amazing time when he played in Jacksonville. Uh, then we go week four, and we jump right back down the scale, the scale against that ultra-competitive game against the Seahawks, which was lost by a point. And we give him an F because he also, once again, threw zero touchdown passes and two interceptions. There's a pattern sort of emerging. Then you go week five against the 49ers and he has an A, an a performance and you can't really doubt it. He had a 140 pass or something ridiculous, um, 130 pass rating, something like that. Um, destroyed the 49ers and then we go week six um, I'm going to give him a C to a B again because that game against the Jets where yeah we won 24 nothing, but he also threw two interceptions in the, that game and then one of them was a miraculous catch where he caught it on his ass like but this is there's sort of some stuff to be concerned about there's some stuff to be happy about um, and the thing I will point out is that the three games that were won were sort of team efforts. I'd say I don't think Fitz won a game on his own. But the three games that were lost, I think Fitz lost those games. Maybe other than the Bills game, I think that might have been the team. But, you know, you can definitely look at the Pats. I think he lost that game. You can look at the Seahawks and he definitely lost that game. Now... Fitz is the most inconsistent QB in the NFL. And it's a thing that people have, you know. I mean, he rides as the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Fitz magic turns to Fitz tragic, you know, five times a season. You have to respect Ryan Fitzpatrick for doing what he's done for the Miami Dolphins. And he's led the Miami Dolphins from complete obscurity in the fact that they got blown out 50 something to nothing or to seven. I think it was seven against the Ravens in week one last year to blowing out the 49ers in very convincing fashion this year. Now, the other question is, why Tua? Um, 
So why Tua? And it's because Tua was the fifth overall pick and he had to play at some point this year. Ryan Fitzpatrick even knows that this was going to happen sooner rather than later and right, and he was going to lose this team at some point this year. Now, the next part is why change quarterback when you're in a good place? I would think that that's because the Dolphins believe that they can win now. They believe that they can win in this moment and that Tua gives them the best chance to do this. People have got to trust Brian Flores at the helm with what he's done with this team to turn them around. I think a few years off contending, but to do what he's done and change it into a team that is actually not frowned upon anymore uh, is absolutely amazing. The reason is so. Another reason is that it's Tua because Fitz was losing games. He might have been the team might have been winning some, but he was losing games and also this is sort of the best time for Tua because we play the Dolphins play the Rams this week and yeah that means Aaron Donald but then it's the Chargers who've got a weird defence then it's the Cardinals who've got a bad defence then it's the Broncos who've got so many injuries that the team isn't considered a playoff team and then we've got the Jets and everyone knows how bad the Jets are then you've got the Bengals who have a bad defence so the question should be, why not to her? Why not start to her now? Like I said, Flores is the right coach. Last year, the Dolphins were 0-6 at this point. They're now 3-3. Three and three. And people are actually beginning to watch them. Now, I think Tua has been put in. I think this decision has been pushed along quicker because of how good Burrow and Herbert are doing. And also, let's get this in because if Tua's a bust, if Tua's a bust and the Dolphins lose five games in a row now, the Dolphins have got two top 10 picks and why would you not try and trade those picks to move up to number one and get Trevor Lawrence? Tua could be the next Josh Rosen, which is an absolute shame because of how good he was in college, but that's the truth. Anyone could be the next Josh Rosen. Um, another thing that's going around is that the vet, everyone says, you see you like top level reporters. The veterans in the locker room aren't gonna like this. The veterans wanna win now. They don't know how many years they've got left. There's only one person on the Dolphins team that's over the age of thirty. Ryan Fitzpatrick. They might have played a few years, but there's only one person over the age of thirty. Which means that everyone has got next year to play. So they can look to the future. They're not gonna write this season off and they're gonna try and win games, but they can look to the future. Very easily. Uh, this is it, people. You can't criticise the decision because of injuries. Other than the hip, all of Tua's injuries aren't that bad. If you go back and look, everyone will say, oh, he's, he's, in, he's injured all the time. He was injured all, all the time. He missed two games in college other than when he had the hip injury. I'm pretty sure it was two, two or three games. He, he missed no time at all. The argument doesn't work. The real question for the Dolphins was not was not, should should we keep fit? No, it's, it's, it was when should we start to her? Um, it's why not to her? We, I think the Dolphins can win with to her. And that's the whole situation that's going on in Miami. It's time for a change. And the future looks bright, is not it? And that's one thing that people have just got to keep looking at. You've got to keep looking at where this team's going, not where they are right now. And I know that's hard considering a lot of people like to focus on the season that is, hand, that is, in, that is in hand. But like I said with the Cowboys, would you like to win with a mediocre team or would you like to have consistent success for 10 years with a good team? And I think if you ask anyone, they'd rather have the 10 years than the one year of success. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Thanks for watching, guys. This was the, the Bandit Show for this week. I hope to see you all soon. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe for more content from us. And check out all of our social media links down in the description, Spotify, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Remember to watch all the other content on the Bandit Show. And see you next time.